Danny Kahneman describes the experiencing self and the remembering self. And that happiness and satisfaction you gain from the outcomes of your decisions do not come from what you've experienced, but rather from what you remember of the experience. So uh, can you speak to this interesting difference that you write about in your book of the experiencing self and the remembering self? Danny really impacted me because I was an undergrad at Berkeley and I got to take a class from him long before he won the Nobel Prize or anything. And it was just a mind-blowing class. But this idea of the remembering self and the experiencing self, I got into it because it's so much about memory, even though he doesn't study memory. So we're right now having this experience, right? Mm -hmm. And people are, can watch it presumably on YouTube or listen to it on audio. But if you're talking to somebody else, you could probably describe this whole thing in 10 minutes. But that's going to miss a lot of what actually happened. And so the idea there is, is that the way we remember things is not the replay of the experience. It's something totally different. And it tends to be biased by the beginning and the end. And he talks about the peaks, but there's also the, you know, the, the best parts, the worst parts, et cetera. And those are the things that we remember. And so when we make decisions, we usually consult memory and we feel like our memory is a record of what we've experienced, but it's not. It's this kind of very biased sample, but it's biased in an interesting and I think biologically relevant way. So in the way we construct a narrative about our past, you say that uh, it gives us an illusion of stability. Can you explain that? Basically, I think that a lot of learning in the brain is driven towards being able to make sense. I mean, really, memory is all about the present and the future. The past is done. So biologically speaking, it's not important unless there's something from the past that's useful. And so what our brains are really optimized for is to learn about the stuff from the past that's going to be most useful in understanding the present and predicting the future, right? And so cause-effect relationships, for instance, that's a big one. Now, my future is completely unpredictable in the sense that like you could, you know, in the next 10 minutes, pull a knife on me and slit my throat, right? I was planning on it. Okay. <laughs> exactly. But having seen some of your work and just, uh, you know, generally my expectations about life, I'm not expecting that. I have a certainty that everything's going to be fine. We're going to have a great time talking today, right? But we're often right. It's like, okay, so I go to a, a see a band on stage, you know, I know they're going to make me wait. The show's going to start late. <laughs> and then, mm -hmm. you know, come, they come on, there's a very good chance there's going to be an encore. I have a memory, so to speak, for that event before I've even walked into the show, right? There's going to be people holding up their camera phones, to try to take videos of it now, because this is kind of the world we live in. So that's like everyday fortune telling that we do, though. It's not real, it's imagined. And it's amazing that we have this capability, and that's what memory is about. Uh, but it can also give us this illusion that we know everything that's about to happen. Um, and I think what's valuable about that, that illusion is when it's broken, it gives us the information, right? So, I mean, yeah, I'm sure it being an AI, you know about information theory. And the idea is the information is what you didn't already have. And so those prediction errors that we make based on, you know, we make a prediction based on memory and the errors are where the action is. The error is where the learning happens. Exactly, exactly. Well, just to linger on Danny Kahneman and just this whole idea of experiencing self versus remembering self, uh, I was hoping you can give a simple answer of how we should live life. Uh, <laughs> based on the fact that our memories could be a source of happiness or could be the primary source of happiness, that an event, when experienced, bears its fruits the most when it's remembered over and over and over and over. And maybe there is some wisdom in the fact that we can control to some degree how we remember it, how we evolve our memory of it such that it can maximize the long-term happiness of that repeated experience. Okay, well, first I'll say, I wish I could take you on the road with me because that was <laughs> such a great description. <laughs> can I be your opening yeah. act? Or? Oh my God, no, I'm going to open for you, dude. <laughs> Otherwise, it's like, you know, everybody leaves after you're done. 
<laughs> Believe me, I did that in, in Columbus, Ohio once. It wasn't fun. Like the opening acts like drank our bar tab. We spent all this money going all the way there. There was only the, everybody left after the opening acts were done. And there was just that stoner dude with the dreadlocks hanging out. And then next thing you know, we we blew like our savings on getting a hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> so we should, as a small tangent, you're a legit touring act. When I was in grad school, I played in a band and yeah, we traveled, we would play shows. It wasn't like we were in a hardcore touring band, but we did some touring and, and had some fun times. And yeah, we did, we did a movie soundtrack. Nice. Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. So that's a good movie. We were on the soundtrack for the sequel, Henry II, Mask of Sanity, which is a terrible movie. Yeah. How's the soundtrack? It's pretty good. It's badass. Right. <laughs> At least that one part where the guy throws up the milkshake. <laughs> okay. All right. My song. <laughs> We're going to have to see. It. We're going to have to see it. All right. We're getting back to life advice. <laughs> and you happiness, know, yeah. Uh, one thing that I try to live by, especially nowadays, and since I wrote the book, I've been thinking more and more about this, is how do I want to live a memorable life? You know, I think if we go back to like the pandemic, right? How many people have memories from that period, aside from the trauma of, of being, you know, locked up and seeing people die and all this stuff? Um, I think it's like one of these things where we were stuck inside, looking at screens all day, doing the same thing with the same people, and so I don't remember much from that in terms of those good memories that you're talking about, right? You know, when I was growing up, my parents worked really hard for us. And, you know, we went on some vacations, but not very often. And I really try to do now vacations to interesting places as much as possible with my family, because like, those are the things that you remember, right? So I, I really do think about what's going to be like something that's memorable mm -hmm. and then just do it even if it's a pain in the ass because the experiencing self will suffer for that but the remembering self will be like yes i'm so glad i did that do things that are very unpleasant in the moment because those can be reframed and enjoyed for many years to come that's probably <laughs> <laughs> uh, good advice or at least when you're going through shit, it's a good way to uh, see the silver lining of it yeah i mean i think it's one of these things where if you have like people who you've gone through, I mean, so since you said it, I'll just say, since you've gone through shit with someone, yeah. and it's like, uh, that's a bonding experience often, you know? I mean, that can really bring you together. I like to say it's like, there's no point in suffering unless you get a story out of it. <laughs> so uh, in the book, I talk about the power of the way we communicate with others and how that shapes our memories. And so I had this near-death experience at least that's how I remember it <laughs> on this paddleboard where just everything that could have gone wrong did go wrong almost. Um, so many mistakes were made and um, um, ended up like at some point just like basically away from my board, pinned in a current like in this corner, like not a super good swimmer. And my friend who came with me, Randy, who's a computational neuroscientist, and he had just been pushed down uh, past me and so he couldn't even see me. And I'm just like, if I die here, you know, I mean, no one's around. It's it's like you just die alone. And so I just said, well, failure is not an option. And eventually I got out of it and uh, froze and got cut up. And I mean, the, the things that we were going through were just insane. But a short version of this is, uh, you know, my my wife and my daughter and Randy's wife, they gave us all sorts of hell about this because they were just like, where are we? They were ready to send out a search party. So they were giving me hell about it. And then I started to tell people in my lab about this and then friends. And it just became a better and better story every time. And we actually had some photos of just the crazy things like this generator that was hanging over the water. And we're like ducking under this thing or these metal gratings. And I'm like going flat on, mm -hmm. and it was just nuts, you know? But it became a great story, and it was definitely, I mean, Randy and I were already tight, but that was a real bonding experience for us. And yeah, I mean, it, and I learned from that that it's like, I don't look back on that enough, actually, because I think uh, we often, at least for me, I don't necessarily have the confidence to think that things will work out, that I'll be able to get through certain things. But my ability to, to actually get something done in that moment 
is better than I give myself credit for, I think. And uh, that was the lesson of that story that I really took away. Well, actually, just for me, you're making me realize now that it's not just those kinds of stories, but even things like periods of depression or really low points. To me, at least, it feels like a motivating thing that the darker it gets, the better the story will be if you emerge on the other side. That to me feel feels like a motivating thing. So maybe if people listening to this and they're going through some shit, as we said, <laughs> uh, one one thing um, that could be a source of light is that it'll be a hell of a good story when it's all over. When you emerge on the other side. <laughs>